Pastor Cage back at St. Paul's Lutheran Church here on Bar Street in Fort Wayne, Indiana. With one of our uh, looks around uh, uh, various vantage points, uh, whether beneath or behind the organ or uh, up above here or the stoop out front. Uh, here we are from a more familiar place for all of you, but maybe not the vantage point. This is the, the view from the pulpit. This is the view that the, the preacher has as he looks upon the people of God, which thankfully we have now been able to assemble again as, as the word of God is proclaimed as we are able to come together to, to hear that in this place, even as we continue to live stream. Uh, yesterday was the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, where we gathered here for divine service. And the gospel reading was from Luke chapter 24, where Jesus, after uh, a number of different uh, uh, resurrection appearances over those 40 days, uh, has the disciples listen to him say this, where he says, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. He's going to be with them in a different way, and yet these words are still with us. He says that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. He takes hold of the entire Old Testament scriptures there, the law of Moses, the books of Moses, they're about him. That the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah, the major prophets, and Hosea, Joel, Amos, and all of the minor prophets, they too speak about Christ. And the Psalms and the Song of Songs and all the other writings, they are a proclamation of God's love for us through his Son. The one he promised to would send, he has sent. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He does the opening. He gives the scriptures and opens our minds to understand Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. And then brings it back to this. He says, uh, thus it is written. Again, bringing us back to the text, he does. He says that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. That's what was written, and that's what has been accomplished for us. And so now what? He sends out these preachers from pulpits like this and says that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, and that they should wait in the city for a little while because another promise he makes, the promise of his Father to send the Holy Spirit, that will come upon them and they will be clothed with power from on high. Jesus tells us what is to be preached. So what do we hear when, when we hear the preaching of the church? Is it simply eloquent verbiage? Is it a clever wordplay? Is it an engaging personality of a pastor who, who, who does his own stunts? Uh, those can all be fine things, but Jesus tells us exactly what we are to be hearing and what our children are to be hearing and our grandchildren. In fact, he lays it out in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 1 where St. Paul says, it, it pleased God, I love this, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach because it sounds like folly to speak of God becoming man, born of a virgin, that he dies for sinners, and that this man is risen from the dead, that he ascends not to go away, but to fill all things, and that he in this way is even more present for us as he gathers us and we come together around his word and sacrament. But it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. But the Jews demand signs. We, we want proofs. We want uh, evidence this way. Uh, the Greeks, they seek wisdom. They want to look and feel smart about all this uh, spiritual stuff. But the Apostle Paul says, we preach Christ crucified. This pleases God. And sure, it's a stumbling block to the Jews. It's folly to the Gentiles and to the whole world. But to those who are called, both Jews and Gentiles, and all of us, this preaching is the power of God and the wisdom of God. It is Christ for us. Christ crucified. Christ buried. Christ risen. Christ ascended. Christ pouring out his Holy Spirit for this proclamation. Our salvation through the love that he has shown to sinners by taking our sins upon himself and rising from the dead. This is the last of our uh, little uh, views from different parts of uh, St. Paul's for, for, the for the time being. I'm going to shift to a Bible study. Uh, in fact, we've been talking about the building of St. Paul's and locations at St. Paul's. We're going to talk about the, the man, the apostle St. Paul, as a persecutor of the church. 
whom God makes a, a preacher for the church, that this good news of Jesus Christ may be proclaimed uh, to all the nations. So we'll get, be getting to that here in the next couple of weeks and hope you'll join us. Take care.